Okay. Hey everyone, this is Team uh, Driving Buddy, formerly Smart Mirror, and this is our fourth lightning round on the Aura Smart Ring. I'm Abi. I'm Andy. And I'm Joseph. So the Aura Ring is a smart ring, which tracks a variety of health metrics, and it and it, and by by tracking those metrics, it creates daily scores uh, into the following health habits: activity, readiness, and sleep. And each score is broken down into, or I'll, I'll read it here. So the activity score is broken down into workouts, logs, steps, calories, burn, and naps. The readiness score is uh, based upon your recent resting heart rate, uh, your body temperature, and your overall physical activity level, which which wasn't really specified. Uh, your sleep score is determined by time spent in light, uh, deep and REM sleep, your resting heart rate, and heart rate variability which is a stat that um, this product sort of made up, which we will which which we'll talk about in in the next coming slides. Uh, but the top competitors for for this product are every other smartwatch out there. And then there's there's also a bunch of uh, apps that you can use with your phone that also tr track these fit fitness type things. And then for more direct competitors, we have the McClear Ring Pay, which I, I believe isn't really a fitness ring. It's more like a sort of like wallet, but but functions as uh as a ring as well, I believe. And then there's the circular ring. Uh, and then the the smart ring market share is a, is around eleven point four million, but compared to the to smart watches, which is which has a market share of of eighteen point six billion. This is a, a, like a very small niche market, and maybe this is uh, not the correct um, sort of scope, if, if that makes sense. Um, so what would make the product great is it provides all the general functionalities that you want in a fitness tracking device. Um, it's main purpose is to do sleep tracking, fitness tracking. So you do your workouts and it tracks things like um, your heart rate and then also your oxygen levels. Um, it's also waterproof so you can use it while swimming. Um, and it also, as you can see in the photo down in the bottom right corner, it comes with a mobile app um, and that helps you just organize all of your data. The main issue with this product though, is that it's expensive coming at a price range of $300 with models going up to $950. Um, and its functionality is kind of limited simply because it's a small device. Also, you're spending a lot of money on this device to pay a monthly subscription on top of it to use its features. So I personally wouldn't really feel comfortable doing that. Also. Some reviews that I looked up online, you have users saying it's uncomfortable to wear because it doesn't really come in too many sizes uh, because it's just difficult to design a bunch of different sizes for all the different finger sizes, ring sizes out there. Um, and it could cause chafing. And also on top of that, some people have reported that it's given them scarring. Also, there's no display on it, so it's not really too easy. And you have to have your phone if you want to actually get proper information on what sort of data it's tracking. Um, and then next on to the advantages and disadvantages. Um, it's lightweight. It's a very small device. So it's really useful for people who just want to get tracking on the go and not really have to think about what exactly they're doing. Um, the disadvantages, as explained before, and what makes it terrible is that it's expensive and it doesn't come with a display. Uh, some opportunities that they have aren't really that broad because all you can really do is just expand on more functionality that the ring can provide. Uh, and then the main challenges go back to the size of the ring. It's small, so how many sensors and how much data can you get from such a small device? Uh, also, it's a niche audience. As we saw before, it's 11.62 million in market share. So that's not really that big. And um, just like I said before, developing a ring that has a bunch of different sizes is difficult. Uh, so for the ribs test, 
in terms of relevancy, uh, yeah, we think it's relevant because everything is kind of turning into a smart device. It's like, why not a ring? And then also, like, there's a lot of health fitness devices that are becoming really popular these days, like Fitbits. Um, is it inevitable? Yeah, like, if this company didn't do it, then probably Fitbit would have done it at some point because it kind of makes sense in terms of a product, like, for people who want less functionality than a smartwatch but still want to track some data. Uh, is it believable? Kind of, but not really from this specific company or of, because they're like a really small company. So maybe someone more like an Apple or Fitbit would be more in position to make a product like this actually successful. And that also ties into scalability. So like in terms of the small package of the ring, there's like not much to expand, expand upon. So like it's kind of a limited product stack that they have. So yeah. Um, and then in terms of what comes next, they can try to improve on basic features. So overall, the reviews are like, all right in terms of like professional reviews but then on google reviews it only has 1.4 stars so actual consumers don't really seem to like the product that much and so we're probably predicting some form of bankruptcy or just like keeping us in a low kind of state because fitbit is still popular and then apple watch is just killing it as well so overall in terms of their future it kind of depends on on what kind of new features they develop but overall we don't think it, it looks too good for them so yeah, thank you for listening to our landing round.